Everybody say this. Say hashtag, hashtag. 3000, 3000 challenge. challenge. Say it again. Hashtag, hashtag. 3000, 3000 challenge. challenge. Now say this. I'm up for the challenge. Say it again. I'm up for the challenge. Tyler, my message tonight is winning souls together with God. Winning souls together with God. How many understand that souls are valuable? How many understand that souls are in the center of God's heart? How many understand that people, as we said earlier, are precious to God? Well, I just got one amen on that one, too. How come every time I talk about precious people, I only get one amen? <laughs> you are precious to God. I said, you are precious to God. So, so this is what the Lord Jesus Christ said there in the, uh, the book of Matthew 24 and verse 14. He said that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world, in all of the world as a witness. <laughs> I like that part. As a witness to all nations, all nations. And then he said this, and then the end will come. And then the end will come. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he declares that this gospel of the kingdom, gospel of the kingdom, well, what, what do you mean? Gospel of the kingdom. Well, well we, we uh, read a, a scripture there from uh, Matthew 6, uh, 33 earlier for the uh, offering. And we talked about where, where he says that seek first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness, right? And all these things will be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom. So the Amplified Bible, and that's what we read from the Amplified Classic Bible earlier, the Amplified Classic Bible says that the kingdom of God is God's way of doing. God's way of doing. So Jesus says that this gospel of God's way of doing, of God's way of doing, well, what does God do? Well, what does Jesus do? Jesus heals. Jesus delivers. Jesus sets free. Jesus brings liberty. Jesus, this gospel of the kingdom... The kingdom of God shall be preached, shall be preached in all of the world. So you look at that world, that word there, world, and it's talking about geographically. But you look at the word nation, and it's talking about, the, the Greek, Greek word is ethnos, ethnicities, races. So what did, what did Jesus say? He said that this gospel, this God's way of doing is going to be preached to every square foot of this world, <laughs> geographically, Amen. to every ethnicity. You say, well, how is God going to do that? Well, I could make it simple and just say, well, he's God. Well, he is God. But do you know that uh, God requires or he uh, desires the cooperation of people? <laughs> this gospel, this gospel of the kingdom, of God's way of doing, is going to be preached. So then, if, if that is true, and it is, then someone has to do it. Someone has to preach this gospel. Someone has to make this declaration. Someone has to proclaim. Someone has to tell people. Someone. Say it again. Hashtag 3000 challenge. What do you do with a challenge? When you're challenged to do something, what do you do? do what? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> All right, let, let me make it easy then. If you were challenged, if, if, if someone uh, put a, a, a half a million dollars down this aisle right here, right? And, and there is, a, let's say, a six-foot uh, pond in front of that half a million dollars. See how easy I'm making it? 
and they challenge you to get to that half a million dollars, and when you get to it, it's yours. I don't think you're just going to think about it. No, you're going to go for it. Even if you don't make it, even if you, you fall in, in the middle of that six foot uh, pond, you're going to go for it. Hashtag 3,000. Jesus said, aren't you more valuable than they? Talking about the birds of the air. Aren't you more valuable than any sum of money? He, Jesus said this. He said, what does it profit a man to win the entire world and lose his soul? Well, the answer is quite simple. It doesn't profit him anything because he ends up in hell throughout all eternity. So people are more valuable than anything that you can list. I believe that if we spend enough time with God, we will begin to see where God's heart is, where people are concerned. You are valuable to God. Each individual is valuable Amen. to God. Who so loved the world, who so loved the world, who so loved the world that he gave. Why did he give? Because you are valuable. And so Jesus said that this gospel is going to be preached. So if this gospel is going to be preached in all of the world as a witness to all nations, someone has to take on that challenge. Someone has to do it. Someone. So, so if you would, turn in your Bibles to the book of uh, Romans, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, and I'm going to read from the uh, New King James Version, and we're going to look at verse 13. Romans, 13 or Ro Romans 10, verse 13 reads, For whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. So an individual have to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Right? At whatever point, whatever period of your life you, got, you came into the kingdom of God, you came into the family of God, you called upon the name of Jesus. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's the... Only way we're going to get into the, to the kingdom of God is call upon him. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Only Jesus. You can't call upon Buddha. You can't call upon Joseph Smith. You can't call upon Muhammad. You can't call, you can't even call upon mama. Because mama got to do the same thing that you got to do. And that's call upon the name of the Lord. That's the only way in. 
That's the only thing that gives us access into his kingdom, God's way of doing. No other way. So an individual have to call upon the name of the Lord. Well, in order to call upon the name of the Lord, you have to believe that he is. You got to believe that he exists. Well, if you get to that point, you believe that he exists. Well, now there's another part. If you believe that he is, if you believe that he exists, well, you got to hear it. <laughs> In order to believe that he exists, you got to hear it. You got to hear it. If I called my wife on my mobile phone, right, and I said, uh, I'm in Budapest. She said, well, how did you get there? I said, well, I just happen to uh, want to be here today, therefore I'm there. Well, uh, if she just saw me an hour ago, I don't think she's going to believe that. But she did hear from me. She did hear from me, right? right. So if I called her and, and, and says uh, and say I'm at Walmart, and she saw me an hour ago, now she believed me. So 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 she heard from me. She heard from me. So. How then are they going to hear? How are they going to hear? Well, the Bible says that there must be a preacher. There has to be a preacher. Someone who proclaim, someone who tell them, someone who declare Jesus is Lord. Come on, y'all. Got to be a preacher. Has to be a preacher. And this is, this is the thing here. The preacher have to be sent. <laughs> There's a lot of den denominations in the world. And they went. But if they are not sent from God himself, if they are not sent from the Lord Jesus Christ, I encourage you, not to listen to them. There are those who went, but then there are those who are sent. Well, FYI, believers, Christians, saints, you have been commissioned and you have been sent. You have been commissioned and you have been sent. You say, well, how come you say that? Well, I say that because the Bible says that. The Lord Jesus Christ, what did he say uh, there in the book of Mark 16, 15? He says, go. Go <laughs> into all of the world and preach to who? Every." Every creature. I know some of those creatures look a little bad, and I know some of those creatures look a little scary. <laughs> Nevertheless, he said, preach to them. Yes. Preach to them. Yes. I know some of those creatures smell a little bad. <laughs> preach to them. Yes. Preach to them. I know some of those creatures act like they're out of their mind, and they probably are. Yes. Preach to them. Yes. Preach to them. It's not about what side of the track you're from. It's not about that at all. It's about that you are born again. You are born of God. And whosoever shall be born of God shall overcome any situation, any circumstance. You are born of God. You are a world overcomer. You are a world overcomer. 
So don't allow the, 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 the hindrances that the enemy try and put there in front of you. Oh, my goodness. And try and tell you they don't need God. They don't want to hear about God. Listen, if, if the Holy Spirit impress upon you, it ain't the devil talking to you about speaking to someone. And I, I would venture to say that every person in this room at some point in time have had the Holy Spirit to arrest you and say, say something. Say something. You say, well, what do you mean, say something? Listen, a person can get born again in the kingdom of God this minute and they already have a testimony. They got a testimony. You say, well, they, they, didn't study, they didn't study the Bible. They didn't go to seminary. They did not go to Bible school. They don't know anything about the Bible. They do know that, as the, <laughs> that blind man said. Look, talking to the Pharisees, I don't know if he's a sinner or not. I do know that I was once blind, but now I see. I can see. You can see. You are, no, you are not in darkness. You are in the light. That's a testimony. I said, that's a testimony. So don't tell me that you can't say something. Every believer... God never, God never said, uh, you know, go into all of the world, but before you do that, go to Bible school. Go to some seminary. Oh, you might not want to go to seminaries. You might have to unlearn some stuff after you leave there. Some of them. But, but the point here is that you have a testimony. Every person in the kingdom of God has a testimony and someone need to hear it because it can save a life. And God has given you, he's given you a voice, he's given you the words, He has given you the testimony, he has given you the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jer Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, you got the Holy Ghost. He makes you a witness. And so, we are up for this challenge. I said, we are up for this challenge. And listen, you're not alone in this. You are not alone in this. And see, sometimes that's the lie that the, that the devil tells people. Well, you know, uh, if, if, if I open my mouth and say something, well, well how are people going to respond? Or, 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 or you know, uh, how am I going to be accepted? Or, 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 or you know, uh, are they going to reject me? Or, or, you know, am I going against the status quo? Or all of this stuff. The very first question you get in your mind about telling someone about Jesus, you cast it down. How this? Well, Lord, uh, uh, you know, I'm too young. Uh, 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 Lord, uh, I, I, I'm too old. Uh, 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 Lord, I, I'm from the wrong side of the track. Uh, 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 Lord, uh, uh, I'm too this or I'm too that. No. You don't have to worry about being rejected or accepted. You are accepted in the beloved. 
you are approved of God. And listen, listen. People's acceptance or rejection of you is not the measure of your success. God's approval alone determines how we serve him. His approval. And you are accepted. You are approved of God himself. So the devil is a liar. And he, he poses all of this stuff in, in our heads about giving people what you have. And just as a reminder, yours came with the price. Jesus paid a price for you to have what you have. Freely, we receive. Therefore, freely, we give. Didn't cost you anything, but there was a cost. There was a cost. And so, don't allow the enemy to hoodwink you. What does that mean? I don't know. So, you're not alone. Turn uh, to 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. Sometimes, you know, people want to give God all of these different excuses. And, you know, I'm too shy or, you know, I'm not, not outgoing or uh, I'm an introvert or, you know, uh, I'm too this or I'm too that. All of that, that, all of that is just a mess. That's the enemy. We want to give God all of these reasons and all of these excuses why we can't. And God is saying, you can. There, there was uh, uh, Rebecca, Rebecca uh, uh, Pippert. She, she is an uh, author and an international speaker. And she said this, right? She wrote a book called uh, Out of the Salt Shaker, Evangelism as a Way of Life. And she says that being, uh, being an extrovert is not essential to evangelism. Obedience and love is. Obedience and love is. And so it's the love of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 14. It's the love of God that constrains us. It's the love of God that compels us. It's the love of God that motivates us. It's the love of God that got you into the kingdom. And it's going to be the love of God that get those that you speak to into the kingdom. It's his love. It's his love. And obedience. So shy, being shy, is not a reason nor an excuse. Being an introvert is not a reason nor an excuse. Everybody say praise God. All right, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3. I'm going to read this from the King James Version. It says, So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. So he says that we are laborers together, together with God. We are co-laborers with God Almighty. <laughs> Come on, think about it. 
Think about it. Co-labors with God Almighty. And it is God who is working in you. It is God who gives you the power. It's God who gives you the desire. It's God who gives you the ability. God is working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And there's no greater pleasure that the Father has than a soul coming into the kingdom. The Bible says that there's a, a rejoicing in heaven when one comes out of darkness into his marvelous light. They are rejoicing about it. They rejoice when you came out and in. Listen, this is some serious stuff in the heart of God. And he's not going to change his mind about it because Jesus already said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Notice he didn't say it might be. Notice he didn't say it's a suggestion. Notice he didn't say it's a consideration. No, he says will be preached. Don't let, it, don't let someone else take your place of preaching this good news, glad tidings. Come on, it's all good. We got enough bad going on in the world. We got enough sad going on in the world. This is all good stuff. It's all good. And so, it's going to get done. Now, whether you realize it or not, we happen to be in the last of the last days. See, the, 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 way, the way I think that it works is that when you start uh, getting on the path of uh, advancing the kingdom of God through preaching to others and bringing others in, uh, you realize there's a, a greater sensitivity of where we are in this, uh, 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 this place of the history of humanity. And you start to realize that, wow, we are. We are in the last of the last days. Jesus says to watch and pray. Watch and pray. Well, that works two ways. Watch naturally and watch from your spirit. Well, we can see a lot of junk is going on naturally, but there's nothing that takes place in this natural realm that doesn't originate in the spirit realm. So that's where we have to be looking first. Spirit. And so we realize where we are in these times, in this season. And so as you see where people are and you see the, uh, the, the distress and you see the, the, the hurt and you see the anger and you see the violence and you see all of this stuff that's going on, you start to realize, yeah, yeah. That person, that person, that person, that person. You, 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 you look at them through the eyes of Jesus. Uh, there in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 5, uh, 16, so Paul said that, that at one time, one time I looked at Jesus <laughs> after the flesh. And then in verse 17, he says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. So we have to start looking at people as new creations. Uh, yeah, that's the way God looks at them. They're already new creations. I don't care how much bad they're doing. I don't care how ugly they are. I don't care what they're doing. I don't care where they're being. I don't care where they're going. I am concerned about them going to heaven. And the only way they're going to get to heaven is through Christ, through Jesus. So, so, so we have to see people with our spiritual eyes. That's the way God looks at them. That's the way God looks at you. We got to see them differently. See, because if you, if you spend a lot of time looking at, at people uh, from a natural standpoint, I, I, you know, you wouldn't tell anybody about Jesus because you would say, I don't want him in heaven the way he acts. <laughs> oh, me. So, but no, so we have to look at people the way God 
looks at them and sees them. 